Hello, everyone, and welcome to another TV Party Tonight Extra. I'm your host, the Mandated Reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radlidge. And joining me tonight is my color commentator for these TV Party Tonight Extras, where we look at old school wrestling matches. It's totally 80s, the punchy Pat Mullen. How you doing, sir? Promotional consideration paid for by the following. <laughs> Ah, uh, Stetson for men. So, Pat, what's on the menu for tonight? What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at a behemoth battle here. From It was taped in 1990, released in 1991 uh, on Super Tape 3 from Coliseum Home Video. This is the one and only Earthquake, John Tenta, against Fred slash Tugboat slash Typhoon slash Shockmaster Osman. The the whole Shockmaster thing occurred after the Typhoon Tugboat stuff, right? Like, like he gained notoriety and a, a, a degree of fame with Tugboat and then Ty, more specifically Typhoon as part of the Natural Disasters. And then he goes over to WCW for the quote-unquote big money and proceeds to trip over a 2 by 4 Yeah, Dusty Rhodes got him signed because they're brother-in-laws. And uh, basically, Dusty to this day has alleged that David Crockett has sabotaged him by putting a board in the bottom of the wall that the Shockmaster was supposed to explode through. However, I don't necessarily think the Shockmaster would have been as big of a star even without tripping because essentially you had a large, heavy-set man in a glitter-covered Stormtrooper helmet with a sleeveless mink coat. <laughs> yeah. So essentially you have kind of a... a, a, a... San Francisco styled one man gang and a bedazzled stormtrooper helmet. I don't know if that was going to get over, but uh, tripping over the 2x4 didn't help. But nevertheless, let's talk about this match. Now, I know why I wanted to do it. Two fat guys, <laughs> two large individuals going at it on tape. That's, that sounded just simply delightful to me. What is it about this match that uh, you said, you know what, I should uh, hit Mark to this and we should talk about it? This one's cool because, yes, I mean, we all know Mark's love and propensity for the big fellas, but this has some unexpected athleticism in it, and for those who've never listened to a podcast with me ever, I am a huge fan of Earthquake. I think he was so great. I could literally watch the guy do pretty much anything, including his days as the shark in WCW, um, but he, he was just awesome, and this is one of his more awesome efforts and one of the best visuals you will ever see in anything, period. All right. Well, then, uh, let's get right to it. Uh, tonight, we are our video is brought to us by the WWE Network, so we're going to have to sync this puppy up. All right. So, one, two, three, play. Here we go. One, two, three. All right, we got a shot of the crowd here. So where um, where does this take place? Now, this wasn't a Superstars taping. This was taped, I guess, specifically for a home, for a Coliseum home video, Super Tape 3. Where in the world are they, San Diego? Carmen? Well, th this actually probably did take place during a marathon taping of either Superstars or Wrestling Challenge. They were notorious for doing, like, a four- to five-hour show in a location like Moline, Illinois, uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, all these off-the-beaten-path kind of locations for superstars and challenge and the syndicated shows. And they'd also tape Coliseum video exclusives for those. Can I tell you how, as a kid, how much I hated Tugboat? I, I Look, I, I don't mean to offend anyone listening to this, but I just thought he was the gayest thing I've ever seen. When he now he he cooled up quite a bit, and when I say cooled up, I mean like he got considerably cooler in my eyes as a child. Uh, like ninety one, gosh, whoa, here we go. <laughs> what is with the baby faces in the WWF in the late eighties, early nineties doing heel shit? He just attacked well, John Tenta from behind. He he idolized the tugboat, idolized the Hulkster, and oh, Quake takes a hip toss pretty early. Yeah, big man got right off his feet. But, but he idolized the Hulkster, and of course, the Hulkster, as we well know, didn't always play by the rules. I see, I see, yes. Hulkster would often get even with the members of the Heenan family or uh, Jimmy Hart's 
Jimmy Hart stable, you know, after they threw him a norm, you know, one beating after another, broke his ribs, he'd finally have enough and do some heelish things. But it was okay because he was getting revenge on all the nonsense they pulled. Gosh, I remember Typhoon being uh, tugboat being a lot fatter. I feel like he had a more distended belly, but he's looking. I mean, look, he's not exactly. Uh, I wouldn't call him fit, you know, in the you know in in the traditional, traditional sense, sense. But I, I I feel like he's been fatter. <laughs> like he's not looking too bad here. No, he puts weight on as Typhoon, and maybe that was intentional to kind of look more imposing when he was standing next to Earthquake. Who is a large, large man? Mm-hmm. They they build him at, at six foot eight and four hundred and sixty eight pounds. That's really probably not far off, as exaggerated as these things get. Right. And we have a side headlock here. We're going to take some. We're going to slow down the match. We're going to get ready for a spot. I'm sure. Let me take this time to to say once again a little bit of a hair pull. Uh, like I said, I hated tugboat. I hated this whole. This has got to be. While Hogan's out and he's on the on the you know superstars tapings talking about send your cards and letters to Hulk Hogan after Earthquake squashed him, this has got to be like pre SummerSlam. Uh, and I remember you know we talked about this on our Warrior show how much I hated the fact that despite the fact that the Warrior had just gotten the belt at WrestleMania six, they were spending all this TV time promoting an absentee Hulk Hogan and the spokesperson for said absentee Hulk Hogan was this fat bastard over here Tugboat and you could you know he gave you the address to send your cards and letters to get well to Hulk a P.O. box and when you sent them you got a little like uh, I think it was like a 5 by 7 autographed uh, picture of Hulk and you could also get the Hulk Hogan buddy band and Quake and Tugboat going nowhere on these shoulder tackles. <laughs> Tugboat's holding his ground, and Quake is a little miffed, asking Jimmy Hart what to do, like he's going to have an answer. <laughs> what do you do? Here we with go. A, with a, oh, look at that drop kick, Pat. My goodness. Earthquake getting right off his feet. That's not a short man, and he hit him right in the jaw with a drop kick. Outstanding. Very impressive from John Tenter, the Earthquake. Just how cool is that visual? A guy. Legitimately over 400 pounds, getting up probably six foot three, six foot four in the air to be able to nail tugboat with a drop kick, and not like one of those cheapy ones. He turned sideways, got both feet fully up, nailed him. Yeah, that was very impressive. You know, you've said all along that you know John Tenta was de- deceptively agile for such a big man, and there's an example of it. Um, so I don't know if you had any thoughts on my absolute hatred for Tugboat until he turned into Typhoon and how horrible I thought this gimmick was. But do you have any insight as to where, you know, Fred Ottman comes to Connecticut and Vince McMahon looks at him and says, Tugboat, pal, that's what I see for you. Tugboat. I mean, how did we get here? Supposedly Vince was a big fan of Popeye. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And he liked Popeye in his youth. And he wanted a character that was like kind of like a sailor, and he looked at, you know, Uncle Uncle Fred, as Dusty would call him, <laughs> and he was like, "Well, damn, he's big, pal. What do we do with him? Well, let's pair him up with Hulk and see what we can do." And they needed to give him a fan-friendly gimmick, so I've got it. And I guess he was hanging out with Pat Patterson and looked through Pat's album collection and saw one of the Village People's albums. And said, we've got a cop, we've got a soldier, we're going to have an Indian soon, we need a sailor, damn it. <laughs> God. You know, when I listen to the Bruce Pritchard podcast and I, and I hear Bruce tell those kinds of stories or I hear those stories from you, I, I, I have to think when he's not on a podcast, when he's just alone with his, with, his, with his mind and his conscience, he has to look back on those moments and think, what in the hell were we doing? Like, I'm sure there's part of it as Quake drops a second elbow on the chest of Tugboat, who's in desperate trouble here. Mm-hmm. And he just, he just looks at it and he's like, yeah, we made money. What the hell? <laughs> yep. Despite all odds, this shit actually works. Uh, yeah, so the t- let, me go fleece, let me go fleece somebody out of another mortgage. <laughs> Uh, so the momentum has turned on dear old Tugboat here as John Tenta has taken control of the match. Throws him into the ropes. Oh, we're, we're doing this spot again. Okay, so this spot, for those of you who are unable to follow along on the video, uh, t- Earthquake threw him into the ropes, 
They went belly to belly, and then, then they went nowhere. This is, again, the same spot they did earlier. Uh, Earthquake hit the ropes again. This time he takes a clothesline from dear old Tugboat. Tugboat just comes in with the splash, and now Jimmy Hart's trying to earn his keep. He's and interfering. Tugboat was using the splash for a finish at the time, so that could have very easily been the end had Jimmy not put himself in harm's way. Oh, well, Jimmy Hart's trying to say, you know, trying to save his man there. Oh, look at that. Speaking of drop another, kicks. Another fat man drop kick. On, it's less impressive than Earthquakes, but uh, he got up there at least, and he made contact with the chest. It wasn't Eric Watts drop kicking somebody in the leg when he meant to hit him in the chin. <laughs> and Quake does the Andre rope tie spot where his arms are crucifixed in the ropes. And Jimmy Hart trying to come in for the save is held up. But Dino Bravo to the rescue. Really? We, we needed Dino Bravo here? <laughs> what? what? Nope. Now, I mean, and he's, and he's the least mobile guy in the ring. <laughs> I here's what I don't understand about this finish. You could have easily put John Tenta uh, earthquake over tugboat, and you don't lose a thing. Uh, here he goes. He's here. Here come the tremors. Here come the tremors. Now here comes the quake. Here we go. Oh, they got out of the way. Whoa. Now, they, they not only do a shit finish, but then they rob everyone of the Earthquake Splash. Oh, my goodness. And t- Tugboats have lost his mind. He's coming in with a chair. Well, you know, we, we can criticize the finish, but you all remember, you have to keep Earthquake hot because we're not at SummerSlam yet. Mm-hmm. And you have to keep Tugboat hot for the eventual turn they were planning and making him chic tugboat of of Iraq. <laughs> Which they don't do, right? That, or it gets aborted very quickly, and then he becomes Typhoon. It, it gets aborted once they're able to sign Sergeant Slaughter. And that brings us to the end of our match, and we're back to Sean Mooney in a hat here. Uh, that was fun, Pat. We definitely, we definitely need to get some more Earthquake on this show. You know, as he was... I, I I really I enjoyed him as a kid. I thought that he was a great monster heel. I stand by my argument that it should have been Earthquake and Warrior at SummerSlam instead of Hogan and Earthquake, but you know, c'est la vie. Damn it if they take him away, they'll miss him. <laughs> and he must pose, pal. Yeah, they never truly committed to the warrior, did they? Alright. Pat, what's going on with you and the Casual Heroes? You guys ever going to record anything anytime soon? There was unfortunately an aborted attempt at recording this very day because Jed is on a mini vacation, so we were not able to put the whole crew together. Uh, likelihood is the first show will be recorded next week. Now, are you doing? The, are you going back to doing the traditional Casual Heroes wrestling show where Chris uh, half-heartedly reads the news and you guys react to it, or are you doing something different? That seems to be what everybody wants us to do, so we're going to give the people what they want to start with. Where it, Whether it stays that way, we can't tell you, um, <laughs> because we don't know. But that's at least where we're going to start off with things, and we'll build from there and play, some, play around with it some. All right. Uh, my last question. What did you think of Ronda Rousey's Legion of Doom makeup on SummerSlam? Um, I, I thought she looked like Draws. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I was going for. Thanks for hitting that ball for me as I threw you a softball. Jesus Christ. I Like know. draws, like worse than draws in the wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, I think they overdid it. Look, I'm all I'm all for the beating she threw on Alexa Bliss. I'm all for her, you know, being that, you know, Ken Shamrock, Dan Severn, bully in the ring, MMA type. I'm not necessarily into her promoting the power and paint look. My goodness. A oh, little, little too much uh, eyeshadow for me, sir. A little too much eyeshadow. We're, we're criticizing her paint, but as we leave this video playing, we've got six guys with faces painted. Oh, I, you know what? I stopped it. Which, uh, <laughs> uh, how far into the tape are you? Uh, literally right after that match, you've got the Warrior and the Legion of Doom against all three members of Demolition. Oh, yes, look at that. Speaking of power and paint. All right, Pat, uh, we're going to close it out here. Uh, when are you coming back on the Rattlers and Broadcasting Network? Do we have you lined up for any shows? At the moment, no. Um, I just The last one I did was with Jesse Starcher for Source Material, where we covered Thor the Raining and its follow-up. 
Okay. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got Legion, Cloak and Dagger, Predator, Iron Fist, Ozark. None of those are or, or insatiable. And again, none of those tickle your fancy. Uh, no, that's not necessarily true. But there's already you know booking for there, so I'm fine with it. Um, and we got uh, Venom, Hannibal, Halloween. So yeah, you'll have see those. To... I'm not going to see any of. <laughs> Uh, do you follow the Arrowverse shows? I used to. I kind of tuned out when, like, the entire cast and bit players of The Flash learned Barry's secret identity. Mm -hmm. it, it got a little bit much for me at that point, and uh, the uh, Arrow is okay, I guess, but whenever I watch it, I realize it's just Batman. I was asking because uh, they finally announced the dates for the new Arrowverse crossover with Batwoman, in case you were interested in that. Now, are they still going through with the girl who's actually gay but not gay enough to play Batwoman? Yes, they're still they're still casting not gay enough for Hollywood Ruby Rose. Right, because in order to play a part, you have to actually be the part yes. and eliminate the acting part of it. Yep. Charlize Theron was an abused woman, as we all know. That's why she could play that part in Monster. And you know it just goes on from there. Ugh. All right, well we'll 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 figure it out and we'll get you on for something sometime soon. Um, you'll have to hit me up with another match uh, in between there. So for Mister Pat Mullen of the Casual Heroes and uh, sometimes contributor here to the Rattle and Broadcasting Network, thank you for joining us for this TV party tonight. Extra, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Be well, be safe, and behave. <laughs>